All right. Hello and welcome everyone, ladies, gentlemen, both Ains, myself included, to a Saturday stream. Welcome. Hopefully, uh, hopefully everyone's weekends are going all right. I know mine is so far. Uh, just got finished playing uh, a couple of Lothanes. Wait. How many Lothanes? Oh my. But. Welcome to the stream. Uh, I just got finished playing. Uh, I was working on some stuff in Dual Universe. And it took a little bit longer than I was expecting to. Um, and I didn't want to leave some dude stranded in the middle of nowhere. So I... Uh, I kind of, you know, escorted him home before jumping on stream. But, we're here now, and we have plenty of things to do. I didn't stream that. The game crashes like every 30 seconds in the state that it's in right now, so it's not exactly stream content. <laughs> it's got some pretty bad compatibility with the, uh... Um, what's it called? Uh, AMD hardware right now, and that's that's everything that is in my machine at the moment. So uh, the things that we're looking today is finish the uh, high pressure turbine housing, um, build. Oops, we want to build the uh, battery housing. And then we also want to uh, make sure that we have the uh, coolant production for superconducting cables. That's really long. Coolant production for superconducting cables. And then... Um, We want to wire the current power into battery housings. After that, uh, we're pretty much ready to start making preparations for fusion power. So uh, hopefully we can get through all of that today and hopefully without exploding more turbines. Because uh, we went through three high pressure turbines yesterday. And frankly, I'd rather not have to make even more of them. But, uh, once again, hopefully everyone's weekend's going okay. It's uh, It's been a real fun time for me. Uh, the whubs of the generators are uh, somewhat soothing. I actually kind of like it, the way it sounds better in the RF mode. So much bass. I hope you guys don't have subwoofers on. And if you do, I hope the bass is turned up. But, uh, the next thing we were going to do was build another turbine and generator setup. And the way we were going to do that is we measured this out so that this is the appropriate distance to be able to build them next to each other. It's one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven steam blocks, or steam line blocks, and this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we can actually build this from this aspect as well. So let's go ahead and get some of the basic things that we need generator, uh, turbine generator things, and this. And I don't really want to take down the rest of the stuff, so we're going to, uh... It got louder! I want to turn down the sound just a little bit more because that's still really loud. 2%. There we go, that'll be good enough for now. Alright. 
So, turbine generator. That this middle section is just housings and. Oh god! This is two percent volume. It stacks when I'm paused. That way. Oh my. That is that that was not what I was expecting at all. <laughs> Honestly. Then we have this here. And then we have the three on the bottom. This one here. And then the three on top. Then it's ten blocks deep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The last one needs to be that last uh, rotor core, so we won't place that for the moment. But we do need to fill all of this. With the uh, rotor winding. So we will do that. All the way up to that point, I believe. And then we'll fill in most of the housings. We also need the steam bypasses. Steam bypasses go all the way around here, just like this. And then the rest of it is just housings. And the last, uh, um, generator core thingy as well. I'm gonna run through here and bring these things in. And then on the back side, it's also a 5x5 five five on the last two instead of, uh, sort of like starred 3x3 three three, or however that's act like whatever kind of shape that's actually called. Five by five with the corners missing. It might be a bit more accurate. Oh. Fill in these edges here. And place the generator core last. And boom! We have another generator. Let's go! So now my question is, what I don't know if the, uh... I don't know if the battery can take shaft power directly from the Electrocraft stuff. If it can, that's awesome. If it can't, that's bad. But either way, um... We're gonna do it that way, so... Let's go ahead, I actually do need some lubricant cables as well, so let's run that over here real quick, actually. Lubricant hoses! Let's go! And our lubricant is going up really fast, actually. Holy crap, fast. I have an incoming muffin. You're messing with the green screen. Hi, muffin. Muffin? What are you doing?
Hi, Coco. You're being needy, too. You gonna make your little pug noises when I pat your head? Yes, you are. Coco. You want some lap time, Coco? Have some lap time. Poor cone dog. Yeah, you like those pets. Coco. You're a good dog. Yes, you are. You're not supposed to attack me with the cone while I'm streaming. He says, pet me, Dad. Or I'm gonna keep smacking the microphone. Okay, Coco. I'll keep petting you. It's gonna be a doggo pet stream forever. No. <laughs> She looked at me the second I said that. She's like, no, it will be. It will be, Dad. But. We've got these lubricate, lubricant lines. We've got the uh, steam lines. Oh, God. You're being so needy right now. Ah! Sneeze in my face. Coco, why? That's right, Coco laid down. She's staring at the screen. She's got her head like halfway on the keyboard. Okay. Oh. Come back, steam line. Coco. Okay. And we're gonna go with that for now. And we're gonna do this part first. I guess we only need the one on the end there. Then run all of the pressure, or high pressure turbines up to the front. And then get started on the complicated thing that is the turbine again. So let's pull out our trusty Microsoft Paint and start taking screenshots of the book so I don't have to keep pausing the game and making the volume go insanely loud because generators. Kitten, are you... Kitten? What are you doing underneath my chair, like licking my feet? Today's stream is an animal stream featuring Kitten and Coco. It's, uh... This, though? Oh. We have... Those two... Come out one. Need to be really careful not to touch the turbine. It doesn't like it when people jump in it. Otherwise, we have exploded turbine again. Out one, and then without the corner. One, two.
Okay. That's the first layer right in the middle. Just gotta fill it with uh, the turbine blades. Then... Do that. Then... Go ahead and run through here like this. Now we grab the next layer. And this will apply to the layer above as well as below, as we've done before. And then we've got that row like that. And from out here, we basically have uh, the same layout here. Only there's one on the inside of there that time. Let's do it. Two, three. Turbine blade. Are expensive. And then we need one for the bottom of it as well. Let's go. Once again, we follow, uh, that completely. We do a sort of uh, 2 plus the 1 and then we follow the outline of this with the housings, except we put the corner on that one. Just like that. Then we fill this in with the turbine blades. Right. Ah. Now, we go for layer number three. Screenshot and MS Paint. Now, we go one in with a three, like so. And then we do five and five. with nothing in between. Then we do, on the edge of this, block of four. Uh, hold up. I did it wrong. I did my start position incorrectly. It's supposed to be right here. Like that. And then we do the five, uh, the double five row. Then we do the four cube row. Then we have the two, like that. Four cube row. And two that go like that. Fill it in with turbine blades and. Go, 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 go. Soon, we will have all three turbines. Running at capacity. I don't think I'm actually going to end up using like this much power that often until uh, until later when we uh, when we have our moment with uh, the. Fusion engine. This much power is a lot of power. Four. And then the two. And two. 
scared of that side because the turbine is there. Okay. Just like this. And now we move on to the next layer. That's the shielding one, not structures. Up, 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 up. We are now on this one. Leave. Oh my head. Okay. So now we throw this here, I believe. Four rows, yep. So then we do a five row. And then we do a seven row. And then we do three in the middle. Five in the middle. And then we do two and two, just like that. Same thing on the bottom here. Start from here, do the three. Or no. Go back a little bit. Three is on this row. Then we do the five here. Then we do the seven. And then we do two, three, two. And then we do two, five, two. And finally, we have two layers left, I think. Yes. And they both. The other layers are pretty. The last layer is pretty simple, but this layer we want to do the. Uh, turbine housing here in a three, then a five, then one of these in the middle, with three on each side. And then. We do five on the bottom. Same thing for up here. Do three plus the one, then three, a row of five, and then three, and then we do one, two, three, four, five. There we go. Three turbines functioning properly. And now, absorbing a bunch of the uh, lubricant. Let's see how our steam is doing. Eight, ten. Is it still go? I think it's still going up. Is three turbines and generators not enough? This is such an insane amount of power. I mean, I'm okay with it. Oh, go. Are you getting uncomfortable? I'll let you back down. There you go, Coco. Good girl. Alright. So now we have our turbine generators. It's still, uh, it's still spinning up. It's almost there, though. 8.3 something gigawatts, I believe. I 
should remember to drink water too. Okay. That's fully spun up. Let's uh, double check our steam and see how we're doing. 21, 22, 24, 25. It's still going up. It is still going up. We are producing so much steam off of this one generator. It's amazing. And this is nowhere near as much power as the fusion, uh, the fusion generator will actually, uh, or the fusion reactor. There we go, that one. Fusion reactor is going to put out so much power. So, I think, uh, that's just about done. I believe I should probably put, like, surround it with blocks so that it's not, uh, possible to easily uh, throw myself in, or anything else for that matter. So, let's go ahead and use some of our crystalline stone again. We have a lot of it, so why not? Crystalline stone, and do we have much of the bricks left too? We do. Excellent. And we have some columns left as well. There should be plenty of the blocks that we'll need in order to do that. Now, what I don't want to do is start from like right about here, because I want these sticking out pretty far. And I want actually to have the front be glass panes, if I can. We'll grab a few stacks of those. With that, let's get started. What I want to do is right here, I think, is where I will place my last blocks, and I'll just drag it all the way across for the sake of brevity, and we'll fill in the middle as we go. careful not to break the generator, because if I do, I'll have to break the turbine. And then we'll come back around, fill in these as we go. Bring this all the way down as well. Oh, the rumbles. I love them, but they're so loud. It feels like I'm generating a lot of power, and I am, but it's making, uh, is that 2% volume? One percent volume. Can get loud for a second. There we go. Let's go ahead and fill that in. 
And then we'll just keep on chugging. And I don't think I'm gonna allow the glass to really go much further than just far enough on all these sides to uh, allow us to see everything that's going on inside. Like this is as far as it's gonna go and then the rest of it's gonna be closed off, I think. Just so that it looks a little bit cleaner. Rumble, rumble. I wonder if there's a way to make the generator quieter by wrapping it in like wool or something like I can do with the engine and other machines. Kind of awkward trying to wrap this giant thing in wool though. So... Once we get this done, we'll be finally done with our high-pressure turbine housing. And then we can start working on actually doing something with all this power that we're producing. Hopefully we're producing enough lube. We were getting a lot of buckets before, but these things use up a lot of lube, so... We will see how effective that strategy is, and if we'll need to expand it even further than it already is. Okay. Got this here. Then we're gonna bring this out one extra block so that these glass blocks behave, and it looks a little bit cleaner. that's precisely what I'm trying to stop. I don't know if that going into the turbine will make it explode or not, but I don't want to have to rebuild another turbine. Those are kind of not very fun to build. So from the edge of this, it's seven in total. The fourth block is outside, so this is one, two, three, and then four. Then, uh, since they're symmetrical, the same goes for up. So, three on top. Because we only want one block higher on the glass panes. And then we'll accent with bricks in a second, once I get the actual shape done. And add some columns in some places too. Vary the pattern a little bit so that it looks more than I just put like blocks and blocks and blocks of the same thing. I like a little bit of variety in my turbine housings. That's bricks. Down. I'm gonna need a lot of this for the moment, so I'm just gonna throw a bunch of the actual stone in there. And then once we're done filling that out, we're going to move on to uh, accenting. Stop screwing with my chair. I know you're in heat, but it's not, it's, it's stream time is not, like, don't complain to me. Soon we'll get you fixed and then it won't be a problem anymore. But yeah. 
So once we get this done, it should protect the turbines from anything falling into them. Including me. And so, it was two on the edge, outside edges, yeah. And hopefully I don't blow them up in the process of making this. Because that would be unfortunate. And one, three, let me follow this back this way. Very large structure, or a very large amount of power that it produces. Let's go. This is so much easier since I have creative flying from the armor I'm wearing. Otherwise, this would be so much more difficult and so much more messy than it already is. <laughs> I'm not very good at building large structures with big open areas in them without having flying available in some form. I would have, I would be able to use jet, uh, jet packs from the Rotary Craft mod, which is probably what I will end up using in a moment. Soon, TM. Um, but right now. Uh, while I'm working on this, this is what we're going to deal with. Alright, so that's the front end of the turbine housing. Let's grab some more crystalline stone. I'm gonna need way more crystalline stone though. Do I have more in there? No, I don't. I do have a lot more in here though. I'll grab the extra columns as well. And put the glass panes away since I think we're probably done with those. And just fill up the rest with these. If I can. Else, I don't think so. Love you too. Okay. Um. I can't remember. Oh, um. Get frozen some juice. Okay. Love you too. Um, anything for smoothies, really? Anything that you think would be good for smoothies? Some sort of citrus stuff. And please don't explode when I do this. Okay, if it didn't explode there, then we are good. This'll work. I'm so scared of the turbines. I'm so scared of them. Not for my sake, but for their sake. That's what happens when an immovable object hits a moving one. The moving one doesn't win. Big ass cube. Probably leave out the top corner, or the corners actually. And we have plenty of resources to make more crystalline stone if we need it. I just really want to make sure that these are covered so that the little orby things can't get in there and potentially blow up the whole construction. That would be uh, not a very fun experience. like that. Then we'll come over here. Finish off this turbine. 
for this section of the turbine, which is like the dangerous part, I guess. And voila! We have first turbines front and top. Completely built. Then as I finish this part. Now we'll get the second half of this. Hopefully this helps with the rendering too, and hopefully this version of Minecraft will know to cull these, so when I can't see them it'll not render them, but I don't think my I can trust in Minecraft to do that from Minecraft from seven years ago, so we'll see. I might turn some of these blocks into steel too at some point, just to vary the color as well. Alright, we have to get this side too. Stone, 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 bottom, bricks, stone, stone. We're gonna need to make more crystal and stone, like a lot of it. That's fine. I've got no issues with it at all. It's not exactly hard to make, and we can just get a bunch of the shards if we need to. Can't make them out of boosted shards, unfortunately, but I can... I think I can use the transmutation flame to make them out of boosted shards, and so like downgrade the shards. I think? I'm not entirely sure. I haven't tried it yet. So we've got that done, let's order out more of it. I can remove probably the very corner on this as well. Cram away blocks that don't need to be there so that I can use them elsewhere, reclaim them, make it a little bit more efficient because this is a huge structure. Cutting back on these would be a good idea. I'll probably end up removing the bottom section of that as well, but for now I'm just going to finish outlining a lot of this. Go, go, go.
Also need to be really careful not to hit the uh, turbines with my pickaxe if I accidentally make a mistake, because those break faster than these blocks for some reason. There's nothing wrong with that. It's part of the mechanics of these particular blocks, but it's kind of spooky when if I break one block, they explode when they're spinning. It's like the most tense part is the parts that get really close to the turbine. There we go. Guess I'll just section off these parts too. That way we'll have a sort of visual representation for where we're at on the top part at least. Probably need a bunch more stacks of this stone though. There we go. On this side. Can't hear any of the under other sounds going on because these are so much louder than the normal ones. I can't actually like, I have it turned down so far that all I can hear is the very loud noises and nothing else. Because everything else is so much quieter. The nice thing about the high pressure turbines compared to the regular ones is that they don't have um, the, the steam's piped directly into them and as, and as you can see there's sort of like water coming off of the uh, last stage of the turbines and that's effectively like the ones that are over there down in there they have steam blocks that come out of them occasionally when they can't handle how much steam is being put into them, and these can't because there's more steam being produced than what they consume. But, um, effectively, uh, steam blocks come out, and then you have to recapture them, otherwise they make your game lag the fuck out, because it's a bunch of moving blocks, and it tries to render them all moving, doing things at the same time, and it's, like, it's far worse than water, because the blocks are actually, like, moving between spaces rather than just flowing from a source block to wherever sort or the flow ends. And it's really cool the way it does it, but it's really inefficient when it comes to uh well computer specs or er, Java. Old Java, Minecraft Java. And so when you start getting a lot of them Minecraft starts having a lot of render issues and your FPS dies. It doesn't go down to completely zero, but eventually your game will crash um, because it can't keep up with the number of block updates happening. So, in order to do that, you have to use these turbines, uh, not use flywheels and then, like how I am using flywheels down there, and then block off the block that is just below where the shaft units are, right on the end of the turbine, and it'll just delete the steam blocks. It just deletes them. Or what you can do is if you are using the uh, uh, flywheels, like I am doing, use the blocks that are on top of there that are condensers or something, I believe. Pressurizers? Or no, they're just condensers. These things. 
They don't require any power, but when a steam block touches them and they have adequate space inside their tank, they will uh, turn it into low pressure water, which is what that is, and then you put pressurizers behind it, power those pressurizers, and it'll turn the low pressure water back into normal high pressure water. And then uh, that's how you deal with the steam problem. This it just gets little water speculates off at the end, and you can reclaim that by putting reservoirs below the turbine. Um, that does work, and you can reuse it. But it's more important if you're using um, ammonia instead of uh, instead of water, because the uh, the ammonia is actually kind of expensive, and you don't really want to lose that. You keep it running in the same system over and over. And so while um, while this system works great for a water-based uh, turbine setup, like this huge water thing down here. Um, there isn't really a way to produce ammonia this fast. And so what you need to do is you need to create a sort of closed loop uh, ammonia system where there's enough ammonia in the entire system that it'll constantly just be cycling. And you reclaim what you can. You, you reclaim the low pressure stuff from the end of the turbine as it drops down from here into reservoirs and then repressurize it and reuse it. Um, but that requires a lot of ammonia for this level of turbine usage. And it's it's great, but it's expensive. You need to get the bottom and the back here, so... Let's go ahead... And these are going to be the ones that this leads off of. That. Also these. That. And then we'll bring it back. And we're going to stop it where the steam lines are and stuff, so... Just to... Like, nothing can go through those, and so we're just going to put these around it. So, it uses up less blocks. And, you know, kind of looks neat. It's not amazing, but it's not bad, per se. That's right where that's supposed to end. We'll come down here, and then we'll see how far we get with this. And then we need to make more crystal and stone. Okay. And let's run down and do that. So we'll throw the other blocks there for now. And we don't have any more normal crystal and stone, so we need some regular stone. Let's grab five, six, seven. And then some normal shards. We need two stacks of normal shards. So we'll grab one of each of those. Pull out our wand of happiness, our hand of color. And we'll come over here and make some more crystal and stone from our Metacraft casting temple. Just put the normal smooth stone around the crystal shards and you go. Each four blocks, um, it's eight times four, so you use 32 stone plus a shard, or plus four shards. Eight shards? Eight shards. In order to make a stack of 64 of the stone, so you actually get more stone back than you're putting in if shards aren't an expensive thing for you. Early on in the mod, they are pretty expensive, but at this stage of the game that we're in now, uh, they're actually relatively cheap. Almost, like, dirt cheap. The so four stacks of stone gets us eight stacks of crystalline stone. Because we can always just 
create more using the item fabricator or we can use the boosted crystals that are more common from the lumen tree than the normal crystals but we can use those hopefully in, with a transmutation flame to make the regular crystals that'd be a pretty easy way to go about doing that In fact, just to find out, actually, I'm going to do that as a quick example. Like, say, let's take a look at my shards. Um, the one I have the most of is Kuro crystal shards. So we'll grab a stack of boosted Kuro ones. And then we'll grab one. Say so you only have one of those left, but you have a bunch of these ones. You grab a transmutation flame which I left all the way up here on top of our color dimension portal. This thing right here, transmutation flame. And you right click it with an item you want to duplicate. And then it'll tell you, okay, you can duplicate this. And then you throw whatever items based on the colors that they have. So we're trying to make boosted Kuro, or we're trying to make regular boosted chart, uh, regular Kuro shards out of boosted Kuro shards. And so you just, they both use the same elements, and the boosted one just has more of it. So you just throw those into the flame. It'll be like, oh, look, we have some power now. And then you right click and pop out what you would get. So in that case, we get six out of four. So it's a 50% increase. Yeah. Oop. Pick it up. That one. This. Right here. Take them. Yes, I understand I'm putting a lot of power into you. Let's go. It looks like it's not going to take any more, I think. Ow. Ow. Also, the more power you put into it, the more it hurts you. By a lot. Okay, so I think it's as full as it can get on that, which is fine. Then you just right-click it with the wand. And you get more out. Easy peasy. So now out of one stack of boosted curl shards, we got two and some change stacks of the normal shards and then the way we would get more boosted shards or regular shards but mostly boosted shards is come over here to our lumen tree which is storing power from all the pylons you break it it damages you but then you get more shards it's usually boosted shards but you can get a lot of shards out of it like right there we got an additional like two and a half stacks of normal Kuro shards, but we also also got two stacks of boosted ones pretty much as well. And that's why I have so many of these. Once you get to the Lumen Tree, it makes it really easy to get a bunch of those. And it's super helpful. So, uh, now that that's done, let's go ahead and head back up to our turbine housing and see if we can't finish it off with the crystal and stone that we just made. Or I'm going to accidentally cancel my uh, light and fall all the way down first. Which was intentional. Entirely. We don't ask questions. Oh, oh. That. Bring that into the corner there. And we bring this forward until it touches. There we go. Rip that one and that one out. And we'll bring this all the way up. And now that we have that first uh, layer done here as well, we can actually remove this row because it's going to connect diagonally at this point.
and also remove the edges as well. Claim some of these so that we'll have access to more of it later. There we go. I think I did that on the other side already. So we'll bring this all the way forward. And then bring it back this way. Go, go, go! Okay. So now our frame is done. Now we just have to fill it in. Which is the easy part. Ish. I'm gonna be real careful about this part though. I'm gonna have to be real careful on the bottoms as well, so I think I'm gonna actually do those first. Because having to get that close to the pylon makes me kind of scared. I don't like being that close. Or not the pylon, but the uh, turbine. Getting close to the pylons is scary too if you don't have the pylon protection and a bunch of the stuff that protects you from damage from the mod. But uh, before you get to that point, it's just like murder. Especially the, uh, ooh, yeah, especially the uh, dark green. The, uh, Kijani color, it, uh, it poisons you. And with, like, poison three. It's way worse than witches. You basically are just stuck with one health no matter what kind of healing you have for a while. It's, uh, it's a spooky color. It's the most dangerous color. But, green isn't my favorite color, so... It's not a problem. And I also need to be really careful not to place any of these blocks in the way of the spinning turbine blocks as well. It has some like interior edges on like when you make a circle in Minecraft it has like the little jaggy edges. If I put a block in any of those jaggy edges on accident, it'll also blow up the turbine. So the number of things that blows up turbines is way higher than the number of things that don't. So just uh, don't touch the turbines. Smaller turbines don't explode, I don't think, when you interrupt them with blocks, they just stop spinning. These ones do explode. Um. But it could have also been that I just, you know, nonchalantly jumped into the blades on accident when I was building one of the other turbines. But, uh, I'm not entirely certain that that was the case. And so I am going to remain cautious about what I choose to do with my, uh, blocks. When I'm operating very close to the turbine. And now one of the things that I am going to do too is I'm going to leave the back explicitly open so I can get to like this part. But it's only going to be like... Let's see. It's probably only going to be like this section right here. And it's just going to be like a two. So I can like... I can look in here and be like, okay, the turbine has some stuff, and then the steam is here. Steam is still going up, it's so crazy. I think our lubricant might still be too. It's hard to say, I haven't checked yet. And from here, I think I should just be able to access this anyway. We'll see. 
The middle one's gonna be the least of the problems. It's gonna be the ones on the edge. Like the edge two, where if we're out of something, those ones are gonna be the ones that are affected, not the one in the middle. The one in the middle will always receive everything before the other two, and so it should always have everything that it needs to run without stopping. I have tested this theory already. Placing all of the back of this section anyway. Then we'll finish up that other side. Oops. Not sure how I did that, honestly. There's some things that I very much still don't know how to do when it comes to Minecraft, that is one of them. Like whatever that shortcut is that I just did. Actually, I think if I use superconductors, I should be able to just power everything off of the same cable network, honestly. Which wouldn't be bad at all. It's just that the things connected to it would need to be able to support the uh, number of power sources, I guess. Also, I still may not have enough crystalline stone for this. I thought like a full inventory of stacks would be enough, but I uh, might be wrong about that. So, let's pull out some more. Got a few stacks left, but it's not a ton. I don't think it's going to be an... It, it's... My vote is it's definitely not going to be enough to finish off all of the bottom of this. It could be, but I don't think so. I guess we do have most of the surface area covered now, it's just these few sections on the bottom now. And I really should probably, in this line right here, leave it open. So that I can reclaim water if I change it to uh, ammonia. So reclaim the ammonia if I switch it over to that system. I likely won't, but perhaps uh, being able to reclaim it would be just a better idea anyway, because then I could supplement the water system that already exists with more water and run the reactor a little bit hotter. I 
This is where it starts. It doesn't do the one that's right there. But let's connect the up then. Then we'll do the same here. I just want to get this placed so that it's a lot harder for me to just accidentally go up into the turbine. Right now it's really easy to do that because it's right there. that come over here and fill well go 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 I wonder how much uh, reclaimable water actually comes out of that, now that I think about it. They don't actually know, but it'd be neat to find out. Okay, at least for this section, I think I'm pretty much in the clear now. Not really in danger of doing anything to the turbine. last few parts over here. I think we should be about done. Take a look. The turbines are now encased. You know what? Let's make uh let's make some reservoirs to place attached these points here. And I'm just gonna put a ton of reservoirs across the way there to collect all of the uh low pressure water so that we can use it for another water source somewhere potentially. So for that we're gonna need bases, a lot of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven bases. Seven stacks of bases, my bad. And then we need them in a U shape. In the work table specifically. And we get reservoirs. Each one of these can have 64 buckets. So, let's see if 64 of them is enough. Alright, there we go. We now have some, well, 33 reservoirs. Carrying 64 millibuckets each. When they're full, that's a total of 2,112 buckets of low pressure water. Which is why it's going up very slowly.
but it'll just sort of spread out evenly across the whole thing, so as it just runs and consumes, it'll do its thing, and... I feel a lot safer now that this is completely covered, basically. You can't even get all the way through this, like this... I can't even figure out how to get in there normally anyway. I am this tall. Let me in. Let me in. There we go. So I can't actually touch the turbine from here, but I can get in and do like, you know, check the steam levels, 66357. Busy day for you today, Lothane. Jeez. That'd actually, like, scare the piss out of me sometimes, probably. It just wants to tell you the weather, and it makes a sort of, like, alert sound. That's kind of messed up. <laughs> How's our... Uh... Oh my. Just how much lubricant are we making? We have over 7,000 buckets. That's so much lube. I don't need that much lube. Do we have an extra channel somewhere out here? On this line, I have an extra channel. So what I could do... Yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to do is... Well, actually, no, I can't do that. I have to just be able to have an infinite amount of loot. I guess works. Because if I stop it, the... Uh, the... Uh, what's it called? The pipe pump will eventually burst the pump, the pipe that's right in front of it, and it will uh, not be having a great day. Definitely not be having one of those. But I have a ton of 1024s, a couple 256, or one 256 in there. So I have like eight huge fluid drives. So we should be able to. Uh, Store a decent amount of the lubricant anyway. We have eight channels. We have one channel open on this line. That's neat. Probably use that one. So, actually, with that in mind, do I have the 1024 item ones done yet? I have 256Ks. I don't have the 1024s. So, oh, but I can actually make the recipe, though. Oh, 1024. Item storage. I'm missing something. What am I missing? Diamond ones? I thought I made a bunch of those. I might have used them. Actually, you know what? I am actually going to cancel that craft for now. Because what I really need to do is come up here and modify 
Where is it? This thing. This silicon with two sand doesn't work sometimes because it's li it's a 50% chance, but if it gets unlucky, it will produce less. And so I need to modify this one to be... Uh, Different. It needs to be sand. So I need to make two silicon out of five sand. Or five. And then we do silicon two of those out of that. So now it should, in theory, always produce enough. Because it's attempting one extra time for every two of them. Let's go. Place these in here. And away we go. So now we have successfully with our uh, current production Constructed our high pressure turbine housing. Our massive thing up in the sky. Now, we need to start building wherever we want to put the batteries so that we can distribute power to other things. And I think I might put it somewhere, like, down here conveniently, like, underneath this space, and then pipe it around places. Because the batteries really are only, like, where's the RF things? So, three, uh, three RF storage batteries. I want to be able to use this as an overflow buffer, so, um, RF storage battery, right, it's a workbench thing, so I need both of those, I need more pieces of wool, per, so a total of four, I need a bedrock ingot, For each of them, we need centered tungsten to each. The, uh, whatever these are, inductive ingots to each as well. Anything else? Uh, sorry, one each. And then the steel ingots to each. There we go. And throw these in the middle, those there, the ingots in the bottom, those ingots there, productive ingot, and the HSLA steel. Now we have three RF storage batteries for huge power storage. I don't know exactly how fast this will fill up with our uh, current system, but this is definitely plenty of power for anything and everything that we could potentially want to do, for the most part. And what we can do is... Um, we can daisy chain these, so it still technically counts as a single source, because the uh, induction motor has a source limitation. So either we can do three separate batteries into three separate lines, so that we have some sort of redundancy. So like certain sections will run off of certain batteries, or 
I just noticed. Well, hello. But that's green screen. Um, take the top of that off, actually. Fix the filter. Still up there? We're still up there. Move camera, move. How's that? There we go. A little bit on the bottom, but that's covered by the other thing, so that's fine. Okay, back to this. Um, so that if one of the three batteries runs out of power, it's because one of the lines is drawing too much. Or we can daisy chain all three of them, fix the uh, sources thing, and then just use all of it the way it is. Or, e going even further, we can just keep everything completely separate up to the battery point, and then have the batteries go into one thing. So three, gen three of the turbine generators into three batteries separately, and then have each of those separately feed the system. Or start combining stuff. And I'm kind of tempted to... Well, let's see. What's the... Uh upgrade that I need for these. The induction motor needs a tungsten upgrade if I wanted it to be able to pull from all three batteries. Upgrade. Magnetic coil upgrade. Flux conductance upgrade, thermal stability upgrade, torsion resistance upgrade. Electrocraft. Uh, it doesn't seem... Have an upgrade in this one. Let me see if I can find anything. Or is it just... Inductive upgrade? Inductive. That's for the railgun, that's neat. Um... I'm not sure. Maybe it's that one? Or it could be these ones. Movie Night in Discord. Uh, What movies are happening in whatever Discord that is? Just curious. I'd like to know. I'm going to bring up something that I can Hunger Games That's interesting Just the uh, first one or all of them I guess depending on the movie night Let's see What I'm looking for is Electrocraft induction motor upgrade.
Let's see. On the wiki, we see things for there. Um... Upgrade to an induction motor is needed for the thing. But how do I upgrade an induction motor? I came out of work two hours earlier today. Oof. Did you have to, um... Oh, what was... What did you, uh, end up going in early for? Did you get called in? Or did you just go early because you didn't have anything else to do, I guess? I've done that before. Oof. I definitely do go in when I get called in a number of times, but it never feels good getting called in early and then being expected to stay the full duration. It just feels like a really, really long day when that happens. I want to... I need to figure out what the uh, motor upgrades are. Is it just throw an ingot into it? Let's see. Induction. I have one. Induction motor currently has no upgrade. If I get like a bedrock alloy ingot. I there was a bedrock upgrade. Well, it's definitely gone. Contains a 1000x amplifier. Okay, so the bedrock ingots, the, the ingots themselves are the upgrades then. That That is actually super helpful. So... I can just run a bunch of these. Because the bedrock ingots aren't actually that bad. Say... And then steel. If I want to make a stack of them, I just do... That. And put that there with this here. And do that. And it'll just go. And make me another stack of them. So I could have 64 induction engines with the bedrock upgrade. That's good. So... Doggo's barking at the door again. They really like to bark at any sound that they can get a hold of. I do have a world rift. I want to test something. Do the uh, wires... Do these wires connect to world rifts? They do. Yes. Okay. 
So in that case, since we have all of this available, what I'm going to do is I need to make superconducting wires, which are made out of centered tungsten. Oh, it's always centered tungsten. Centered. I have 14, but do how much tungsten flakes do I have? Only 56? Oh no. Uh, our boring machine appears to still be going, but let's double check. Geronimo! Oh, I picked the wrong hole. There we go. I think it's probably gotten to the end of the distance that it's allowed to be in, so... Um, in that case, all we have to do to fix this is we need actually just a single two shafts. Shaft units. So let's run our way back up. And grab some bedrock shaft units so we can move the, uh, the boring machine into our uh, into a new position because um, effectively what it's done is it's gone two million blocks which is the limit to how far they can go and we want more than what we have so let's get more so let's just make sure we have tables just in case we need them and then we need Two bedrock shafts, and that should be it. Because we can just move the uh, the bevel gear that's down there. We can't move the other bedrock shafts, so I'm just going to leave them where they're at. So, let's go ahead and fix this for the moment. I love the world rifts. Like, figuring out how to use those and actually using them has been so much fun. Oh, wait, I, I need way more than one shaft. What am I doing? I need enough to move it six blocks plus one, so seven blocks, to the uh, next tunnel that it'll be digging. So, shaft. That should be enough. Up. Going down. But Now... With this, what we're going to need is to pull this and one, two, three, four, fuck off. Five, six, and then seven. Bevel gear. Oh, input is east. Or no, it's north. South. Outpost is west. This way is north. Got it. Good job, brain. We did the thing. Okay, move those out of the way so they don't become a problem when we start doing this. And then we just grab the cabling. And the chest. And the boring machine itself. And the import bus. That should be all we need to get started down here. We will uh, make this output up for the moment so that we can set up the boring machine. We want So the toggle all button doesn't work for anyone who is curious for some reason. So we're going to do this this way. And then... I guess I didn't need to move it one away. It's going to be kind of close, but it should be fine. We'll throw the chest here. And then the import bus on the side. With all four of the acceleration cards in there. 
And then we bring the cable back. So now it should be active. And then let's go. Output is now east. And there it goes. We are now getting more materials. So that should result in us getting more of the uh, tungsten flakes too. Which is going to be super helpful. Let's see. Is there any other way to get tungsten flakes? It's just the grinder for the center tungsten and that. That is it. This right here. The tiny chance that we get more. Okay. Because that should be good. So now we've got that running. Next up, we have... Ah. Next up, we need to make the uh, superconducting cables, which we'll wait on, but we do need to work on the uh, coolant. So, for the moment, that's what we'll focus on because we need to wait for more iron to come into the system to give us more uh, tungsten flakes. We'll get them fairly quickly with how it's going to be going, but um, out of the whole thing, we're probably not going to get more than a thousand before it hits the end of its uh, run again. So let's go ahead and work on making that then. For that, we're going to need... Uh, in here, it's processing, I believe, or production, one of the two. Refrigeration unit. This is how liquid nitrogen and dry ice are produ produced. Um, but we need to cool it down to absurdly low temperatures. And I think the way we're going to have to do that is get packed ice, if we have any, which we don't. How else would we go about doing that? Uh, rotary craft. Refrigerator. Okay, if we supply the minimum required amount, it will only get 100 millibuckets per ice block. Every doubling of the torque will quadruple the output. However, supplying more than uh, 16,000 it cap uh, 16,000 newton meters of torque doesn't increase the production anymore. It's capped at two buckets per block. And uh, there is a 25% chance to produce dry ice. Alright, so we need 134 megawatts to maximize our liquid nitrogen production, and we also need to be able to produce twenty blocks of ice per second. So that's a lot. What we're going to need to do is, uh, it's, it's a fluid crystallizer and also a uh, refrigeration unit. So let's grab one of each of those real quick. Uh, do I need anything special for these? Refrigeration unit is 
Nothing super special, a condenser and a diffuser. And then the fluid crystallizer is just cooling fins. Okay, so we don't have any cooling fins left. It appears. Let's grab these things here. Uh, we some liquid pipes because we're going to need those. Dancers we'll need. And I'm going to I'm going to do a quick check thing here. Roll. I want to see can can these heaters go negative? I don't think it can. It can only heat, so... Ready. Excellent. Excellent. Are we... are we stuck on this again? No, we're just completely full on the, uh... And that's that's actually what we want. So we want to be completely full on that and have it backed up a bit. So that's good. Let's grab a... Refrigeration unit. Need a compressor and a diffuser. Also need some bases. Five hours down, five hours to go. You got the slow thing. Steel ingots. Presser. Then we also need cooling fins, which are made in here with the three base panels and the six shaft units. Let's go. Should be able to make this now. I didn't grab a diffuser. Diffuser is also easy. It's just a sort of like leftward C shape. And diffuser. So now, refrigeration unit, successful. And we also need a fluid crystallizer. Which I didn't grab an impeller for, actually. But we have those already in our crafting system as well. So let's go with that. Having this place be 95% automated feels really good. So... We now have our fluid crystallizer and our refrigeration unit. I need to check and see. We need to be able to get this to below 30 degrees Celsius in order for it to work. Normal ice isn't going to work, so packed ice is the only way to get it below temperature. This thing. I don't know if the refrigeration unit needs to... You just barely passed Lothane. Good job. Alright, so required power is 32, but... It doesn't have a temperature requirement. The only temperature requirement is for this thing. So we need to get this below 30 degrees Celsius in order for it to do what we want it to do. So... We're gonna need packed ice, I think. And it's possible we can get a compactor with regular ice to make packed ice. Is there any way otherwise to reduce the temperature? Freezing water into ice requires a temperature of minus 8 degrees Celsius, according to this, but that's, I guess, in this game. Um, as interesting, 
Okay, so we could use dry ice, probably, and packed ice along with the uh, freezer thing. But let's uh, let's go ahead and do a thing then. We're gonna we're gonna do a thing before we get started on all that, and that is. We're going to make an unstable mistcraft world because I want to gather some packed ice up. We have a we have a book for returning. That's good. Let's uh we're going to unfold a lot of these pages here. And just see if we get any new ones. Excessive discharge. I don't That sounds both gross and also I don't think that I have I have that page yet. Da, 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 da. Gradient, magenta color, foliage color, west direction. I think I have most of this other stuff though. Die trees I already had. Accelerated I think I already had. Buried structures. There's only a couple pages that I actually want out of this. So let's go ahead and do this. may or may not end very poorly. I really hope that it doesn't. Um, so what we're going to want to do is first off, melt these things because I don't want them. Because they don't stack. Then we're going to want to grab a pact. ice block. We're going to right click it and just copy the pages. We want three of these. And then we want tendrils. Copy. And then I also need to grab more paper. Put this over here. And then I also need spikes. And I need spheres. Then we come over here. And I need a blank link panel page. With Packed ice, tendrils, packed ice, spikes, and packed ice, spheres. And this is going to be an extremely unstable world, so we're not looking to stay here very long at all. <laughs> Don't come back. Let's go. Throw this book here. And hopefully, oh, hopefully that worked the way that we wanted it to. Got all these things. Everything that we should need to leave, including the linking book, which I'll bring out just in case. We don't need any of those things while we're in there, so let's throw those back in there. I'm going to go with basically the absolute minimum of those things. So, let's go. It's going to take a second to generate the world, so hopefully I don't have to close and reopen it, but I might have to. Just take a while. What? Forest drum. It's 
world doesn't look that unstable. Huh. Actually, this, this world isn't really that unstable at all. I mean, it might be. Somewhere. But we have the packed ice, which is what we need in order to uh, probably cool the liquid or the fluid crystallizer enough to allow us to uh, use it consistently. Look at all this. There's even like glass spikes. Go, go, go! Maybe... I mean, if this world is this stable... This looks a lot just like a second overworld. That's actually pretty handy, honestly. There's no obvious negative side effects so far. That may change. There could be corruption stuff going on, and uh, that would be unfortunate, but also, like, it's still a potential thing. Okay, so I think that's probably enough. Um, I guess it's pretty alright. Packed ice everywhere. I'm not constantly poisoned like the last three worlds I made. There's still relatively, like, normal looking biomes outside of the random th things of packed ice everywhere. Not bad, actually. This is an actually acceptable world. In that case. Middle of this lake. We shall return. Let's go home. Oof. And we're back. So now, if I take the 14 degrees Celsius, if I take the packed ice here, and I put it around the edges, it should make it colder. Minus five. I think minus five is enough. Required power, required speed. Our input is on the back. Yes. Yep. Let's try it. So, we have one DC electric engine. We do a second one. We're just going to use it for testing purposes at the moment. Let's grab a lever. Um, we need another DC electric engine, so let's grab some redstone, and we're going to pull out all of our steel things again. Our bases. And also... We're gonna need some cool bins. Because we're gonna need a gearbox, which I'm going to attempt to make out of wood. It might not be able to handle the speed, but we'll live with it. And then throw these in there to make our DC electric engine as such. I love using these things. And we get the junction going. We have one left, which is plenty. And then 
So I'll put at a speed of 256. So we need to we need a 4x uh, wooden gearbox. We already have made. Excellent. Let's throw this here with cooling fin. This is going to be a really cold cooling fin because of the packed ice. And then let's throw this on here. Let's pull out our uh, screwdriver and angular transduce. Where did I get 18 gearboxes? I keep misreading that and thinking I'm seeing less than I am, aren't I? Yeah, I am. I made a ton of those, I guess. Oops. Okay. So now we'll just throw these here and we'll see what happens. Currently in torque mode, needs to be in speed mode. So this is the absolute minimum, but it currently has no fluid in it. So let's grab a bucket. If I can even place buckets directly into this. Is negative five enough? I cannot place buckets directly into this. Let's grab a reservoir. If we have any left, we do. And some piping. Ah! Why is it not receiving power? Oh. Makes sense why. Still not receiving. That's why. That's the back. Okay, so the packed ice will work. It requires negative three degrees, we're at negative five. So that is good. Now we'll just need to put an excessive amount of power into it. Because the refrigerator thing will turn the ice into liquid nitrogen and uh, dry ice. So let's get started on that then. And for the uh, fluid crystallizer, additional power doesn't pr have any extra production. No, it's just a... Uh... Ryus might be able to lower it even further, but for the moment, uh, that's going to work. Throw this in here real quick, pull it out. And what we're going to do... For this, let's throw all that back in there. I think initially we're going to micro turbine it. So let's grab the ductive ingots. Three, four, five, six. Do I want to micro turbine it for both of them? Yeah, let's do it. And then we need the ignition things. as well as a compressor for each of them and a turbine for each of them and then some aluminum alloy ingots but a redstone as well two of them for the uh, things so then we throw these in here that fashion with steel in the corners. And that'll turn it into the uh, other things. Pull out the bedrock alloy ingots. My English is going absolutely bonkers today. So we'll throw the high temperature 
turbine, compressor, those two, these things, plus three base panels on the bottom. Now we have two micro turbines. And I think what we're going to do here is potentially I don't know if that's enough water. This is 31 times 8 buckets right now. That's only about 250 buckets. We're gonna need a lot more than that, I think. So, first off, let's go ahead and power the, uh, it just has a minimum speed, so we can get the fluid crystallizer. Um, with a 16x gear unit. Which... I have a diamond 8 to 1, but tungsten can actually handle it. So let's make a tungsten uh, 16 real quick. That's really simple. Just need 8 gears. And we also need... Uh, And then what you do is you make four gear uh, for the two X's, and you throw one down below, and you just keep dragging it back over. So you have a 16 X. But I made a mistake. Because I don't want to have to use a lubricant for this. So we'll get all eight of them back. And what we want is actually diamond gears. I'm rarely ever going to use the uh, tungsten or lower at this point. One, two, three, four. Because of the uh, loop, just I just don't want to have to pipe lubricant around everywhere. Honestly, that's that's it. It's me being lazy. Out. And we drop this next to our lubricant line to fill it up with lubricant. It only needs a thousand in it. It'll only take a thousand, really, but as it's being used, it will never uh, run it down, which is super helpful. Now we have one short line on that. I'm tempted to siphon some of the power off of this. Um. In order to get the refrigeration unit operating at maximum speed, we need 134 megawatts of power. How much? That's a three to one in line. This is one third of the power coming out of there. I think it'll be slightly difficult to get exactly what we want in terms of the uh, power, but 134 should be two jet turbines worth of power. But I don't really want to do that. We can pull power off of one of these, I guess. That's a huge amount of power, though, and we don't have the superconductors yet. So. Let's see. Gas turbine. I do have one gas turbine, and that's half the power necessary to get it to one tick operations. So, I mean, I go to 16384, if it, that's just a 16x multiplier, 65536. Divided by 16 is a 4096 rads speed. Which is double the minimum time. 
basic time on it is basic operation time is how long? Actually, wait. It only has a minimum torque. So actually the 4096 wouldn't be that bad. So let's go ahead and do this and make another 16. And we'll grab another mount. Throw these in here, and then we'll just do the same thing that we did with the other one to fill it with lubricant. Micro turbine will go for. Oh, well, I can micro turbine the water too. That wouldn't be a bad idea. This is going to use a lot of water, guaranteed. Uh refrigeration unit. So first off, um, where do I want to put this? I have a few channels that I can use on here. So I think I kind of want to use this, this space. So Sorry about that. I just sneeze really bad there. Cool. I have the pipes. I don't need the lever or the DC electric engine now. I don't think I'll need the shaft junction either. I will need a liquid spiller. And I will also need a pump. But I don't have a pump. I do have a condenser for the pump, and an impeller for the pump, though. And then we also need a glass pane, and we have everything else through the other supplies. So let's go ahead and put this together real quick, throw these things there, two on top, the one there on... I forget how to make it. Pump. Oh right, the... Uh... What was the condenser for that I thought it was for that it's not for that? I don't really remember. We're gonna grab a set of normal bricks here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a... For the water source... We will do... Just like this. A... Uh, I want to go too deep on it, so not there, but uh, there will be walls here. The bottom will be right here. And the reason why is because I want the liquid spiller to be able to fill this as it gets used up fairly effectively. And both the liquid spiller and the pump will pull from, uh, the liquid spiller goes bottom to top, the pump goes top to bottom, and so they'll take turns going back and forth. Um, for the liquid spiller to go at maximum effectiveness, or the effectiveness that I'm looking for, we just need a DC electric engine on a 4 to 1 gearbox. So let's grab some of those. The electric engine lever gearbox four to one. I already have actually, so let's uh, let's get these set up now. Let's 
So that the pipe pump. This will require a 2x gear unit in speed mode. Or actually, what are the pumps up here set to? They're on 16 torque. Okay. So I'll need another diamond 16. And that means we need more diamond gears, which is fine. They're fairly simple to make. It's just... I'm going to need 40 diamonds. 10 tungsten gears. And these are actually like pretty difficult to get compared to the bedrock if you're able to work your way around them. Um... So, sometimes it's easier to go the bedrock route first before you get diamond ones. It's just the bedrock takes a really long time to get when you're at that low power production. And I'm not entirely certain that you can... Well, I think you can use tungsten. You can use tungsten ones. So, if you can make tungsten, which requires a lower temperature than making the diamond ones, you're just fine. Um... And then you can skip diamond, go straight to bedrock, and then work back down as you use the bedrock gears for other things. But the problem with the bedrock ones is you can't pick them back up. You put them down, and then you break them, and they fall to pieces. So that's that's why it's not very favorable to go for them first if you need to be able to reuse your resources. But if you don't, easy peasy. So we have another 16 amount fill it up with lube again and then what we're going to do here is we're going to set up a little tiny loop we're going to have a micro turbine uh, we're going to set the machines on this side, at least. Put one space in between them. 4 to 1 gearbox here. In speed mode. On the DC electric engine. And then the micro turbine here. And this is where we need to like come underneath and do the cabling and stuff. Oh, oops, not that cable. I want to grab normal cable. Just the regular glass cable and then a fluid uh, export bus. And then I'll also need an import bus as well. Or both fluid and a regular import bus for the uh, liquid nitrogen and the oops dry ice. But those we don't need at the moment. It's just the one fluid export bus. Our trusty bucket of jet fuel, which I think is stuck in our networking tool at the moment. Not sure how it happens, but it's in there. And so let's bring it over here. And we're going to start by throwing the export bus down with the jet fuel thing in it. And then this is where we do our micro turbine. Not micro turbine. Uh, our, one of our 16x gears in torque mode. And then a pump. Over here, we put one of our cooling fins on the gearbox, and we do the liquid spiller. Now, if we look at this, the liquid spiller should be... Why is it taking damage?
Or is it just damaged? Did I turn it on before? Oh well. If I did, in order to fix them, uh, you just need... Just wooden gears. And that's how you fix any of the gearboxes, is just a gear of its respective type. If they have somehow taken damage. And now we should be good. So now we're down to 0 0.05, one tick operation on that. And then what we want to do is we want to put the pipe in between them. And then before we start up the other thing, we want to put a little bit of water in there so that the uh, pump has something to work with. So let's grab a couple buckets and make a small infinite water source just temporary down there. One there, and one there. This will be enough to fill up the entire thing once this turns on. I believe that in torque mode will be plenty enough for what we're looking for, so let's go ahead and hook this up. And it'll turn on, and here we go. Okay, so the pump doesn't pull from more than one below it. But the liquid spiller pours into spaces that are up to two below it. So now we've got this situation, which is exactly what we want. It's not really a problem. So now we have our water source for our fluid crystal crystallizer. Our fluid crystallizer will take another microturbine. So we'll just run these back to back, I think. And this is going to be 16x in speed mode with a fluid crystallizer. And then this with the blocks of packed ice around them. Because the packed ice will never melt. The uh, normal ice will. I don't know if dry ice does. I think dry ice still does too. But dry ice can be used to make this even colder if we wanted to. But we just do that. And it'll drop the temperature low enough that it should, in theory, give us one tick operations uh, easily. We'll run water over here real quick. Like that. And then we want our fluid, or we need a second fluid export bus for the other micro turbine. And technically another one for the gas turbine as well. Export fluid, two more. Let's go for it. One of them goes here. And we uh, grab our bucket of jet fuel, throw it in, and then throw our cable down. Then this will turn on in speed mode. And I believe the diamond gears can handle that. Yeah. If it went any faster, it wouldn't be able to do it, but it can, as it stands. So now we have one tick operation time for our ice. So now, what we want to do is we want to get um, one tick operation times on, or as close as we can to one tick operation times, on our refrigeration unit, which is going to require a gas turbine. Well, more it technically requires two gas turbines for what we want to do with it. But I don't know if I... Well, actually... I think I can afford to run two gas turbines. 
We are using a decent amount of the uh, jet fuel, though. But it just finished filling it up, so it's not even trying to fill it up at all. Um... So the two gas turbines are run some line or I run a line off of the uh, generators up there, but I kind of want to save that for other things, like using huge lines of boring machines for massive amounts of supplies, and running you know multiple extraction machines or extractors at maximum efficiency. But let's see. Um. I don't want to play with that a little bit. It bothers me that the liquid spiller... How many DC electric engines do I have? Just one more. So let's set up another thing then. Uh, lever. And the... Uh, what's it called? Quark's gearbox. Okay. Grab those. Put them down there. And we'll do the same thing just in the opposite corner. And then we'll put a stone bricks down here for the lever. This in speed mode. Go. Hook it up to the piping. Or maybe it'd be better to do it in a place where it can Infinitely mag water. Eh, whatever. One more would probably be ideal, but this should go plenty fast enough. So now, with this producing one tick ice, now what I can do is figure out how fast this gas turbine will make the... Uh, I'm going to need to be real careful with this. Um, like that. So I can't get sucked into the damn thing. And then fluid export bus. But it was on a... Uh... The torque was 16. The gas turbine produces at 1,000 kilonewtons, right? Yeah, so it's a 16 unit in torque mode. At the fastest speed it can go for this refrigeration unit. And I don't believe the refrigeration unit needs to have a temperature. So then what we do here is we want to have a bus. We need a storage bus. Another export bus and an import bus. But we also need these as fast as possible. Uh, probably a good thing to make more acceleration cards as well here. Let's make a few. One, two, three, four specifically. And then also I need a chest. As an interim and quartz fiber. Just a few of them. So now, the idea is going to be this. 
these are technically going to be two different systems. So what we want to do is we want to have the uh, import bus here, fully accelerated, and then a cable with a chest here that has a storage bus on it. This will have a quartz fiber line here and here. And then we will run cables there and here. These will that will provide power to these two technically separate networks. And I do need one more uh, storage bus. Which I do not have uh, in the auto crafting thing, so storage bus. I need a sticky piston. Okay. So now the way this works is you can't go directly from machine to machine for some reason without going to a storage system first, but if I do it this way, both of these will read that as is, and then this should pull the ice into the chest. It makes snow too. Uh... I guess it does have secondary thing. Oh. is oh whatever it puts this directly in here and then what we need to do is we need to grab some of that ice and then put it into the export bus with all of the acceleration cards in it then we turn on the thingy by doing that as it powers up set the appropriate torque and it's just gonna speed up until we're at max speed which is gonna take a little bit of time we're only halfway there so far And in the meantime, what I can do is, how many channels do we have left on this one? Four of eight. I'm gonna take this tree down. X. And over here, where the vacuum chest is, I'm just going to dump all this stuff on the ground. And I'll just yoink it into the system. Because I don't need it right now. And so, 1.95 seconds is apparently the fastest this will go. Which I think is plenty fast. But it also does make dry ice. What does dry ice make? makes carbon dioxide and that is it I can process nuclear waste I can turn it into a liquid oh my that sounds like a terrible idea Do 
I don't think this will produce any more snow because it only produces it if it doesn't have enough water, and this is going slower than that, so that'll do. Then what we want to do is we have four lines, so we want a uh, we want a special kind of setup here. We have the fluid import and the regular import. Regular import will run indefinitely, but what we don't want is the uh, fluid one running indefinitely, because that's going to go up really, really, really fast. So what we want is a fluid level emitter. I might have one already. I do. And then we also want a... Uh, actually, I think that's it. Oh, wait. No, 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 no. We need a redstone card. Like that. So now what we do is we want to connect this into the system. Two ways. We're going to have it like that. And we're going to have the import bus just do its thing all the time. We'll do that on top. And so that'll pull any dry ice that it makes, and it doesn't make dry ice all the time, so that's not really going to require anything. What we will need to do is, with our uh, fluid import bus here, is do that so that it will pull it. And that's, that looks like it's plenty fast enough. But what we need to do is we need to, for a moment, remove that cable. Ouch. And to bring another line this way, that comes up to right there and has a fluid level emitter stuck to the end of it. Then... Upgrade that with a redstone card and tell it to be active without a signal. Set this thing to, let's say, I want to do 2 million millibuckets, which is 2,000 buckets. And then we want to come over here, grab a canister, and fill it up with our liquid nitrogen. Actually, I might be able to do that with just a bucket. Yeah, there we go. Bucket of liquid nitrogen. Let's go. And grab this. Throw that in there. And I guess for brevity's sake, just like for clarity, do that. And then connect it back up. Now, when levels are above or equal to the limit, and it is not currently, so it will constantly draw out of here just fine. And hopefully, I don't really know what's going on with that. That was weird. But I guess what I need to do is... Add a separate thing for snow that brings it back into the main system. Let's see. Snow. Can turn it into actual snow. Cloud seed. Okay, so there's there's not much to be done with uh, with a snowball. So I'm not sure that there's a way to avoid it easily. But you know what? For now, we'll do 
and import bus here. And then a storage bus, which we'll need another sticky piston for. Let's go ahead and craft like 20 of those. Storage bus. And I need a interface. Okay. In order to solve this problem, we're going to do this. We're going to have another chest on that isolated system that's going to take only the snow. So... Uh, oh, my eye. Import bus, check. Storage bus, check. Parts, fibers, and cables, check. I might need more acceleration cards. Four of them. So let's pull that out. One, two, three, four. I'm out of just pull as many as I can. I use a lot of them, so it's kind of necessary. And then also we need another chest, which I failed to grab. Like this. Like. Then what we want to do is, for the occasions where it does make snow for some reason, even though I'm not sure why it's making snow instead, uh, we will throw this here. Not there. That was, that was a dumb on my part. I'll throw this here. Along with a quartz cable there. And then what we want to do here is partition it. If there's no st snow in there at all, we can set it to partition it based on the currently stored items. Now it will only ever put ice in there. And then we'll do this. And it'll put, you know, the snow and ice in there. But we only want it to... We want to partition it to be snowballs only, so that way we're not overproducing on the ice, right? And then we take one of our normal cables here, bring it up so that it's connected to that, and then we use an import bus. It's a little bit convoluted, this part, but it will work, because now we can pull the... Uh, Comes all the way around, and now we are at seven of eight channels. And it'll just start pulling the snow into the system. Let's go ahead and throw... I think I'll only ever need two on there at most. But now we're producing dry ice and liquid nitrogen. Um, I don't know of a usage for the dry ice. Outside of making carbon dioxide gas, for the moment. But at the same time, uh, there may be a way to use it. I could also, in theory, make a one tick repeater thing that throws snowballs. I could. It'd be fun. But I don't think that's necessary at this point. So now we have those things set up, and the liquid nitrogen is the coolant that we're looking for, for our uh, systems. So, given that, I need a, what is it, what is it, rotary craft book. There's what whatever's the thing that fills the jetpacks. I forget which machine it is. Not those. Uh 
Bang, Van de Graaff, um, Defense Offensive Machines, Filling Station. I believe, could be wrong, that this is also used for um, putting coolant into the superconducting wires. I can double check that real quick. Um, liquid nitrogen. Uh, Um, I can't find anything very quickly on it, so we're just going to attempt it since it's not very expensive or really, like, anything. So, it's the filling station. It doesn't look like there's anything else that's really uh necessary for that either. So reservoir, impeller, and the other things. So let's grab our usual setup of steel items. Gear shaft and ingot. Then also base. We will need one impeller for this. We will also need a DC electric engine, which will require a piece of red or two pieces of redstone. And we'll also need a reservoir that is empty. Using these, we can make the filling station. Did I miss something? Pipes. Pipes. Pipes are important. So now, filling station. And then, DC electric engine. And a lever. We'll also need a fluid export bus. And we'll also need, on top of that, more cables. Because we always need more cables. So now, let's find out which line we can pull off of. I can't pull off of this one. Or that one. Let's pull off of the pink one. And let's make a little bit more of the pink cables as well. Pink smart cable. I think that should be enough to get us where we want to go. Basically, I want to have it go right there. Out there. That's fine because the filling station will go here. And where is the ink line? Did I not put a hole over there? I don't think I did. Yeah, so that goes there. Wherever that is. Right here. Don't want that. We want to keep this as much as a separate line as possible. There we go. And then have our fluid export bus. And then grab another bucket of liquid nitrogen.
but I think was stuck in our thing, so I don't think I even needed to do that. It was stuck in the thing, so I can pull it out. Now, if my theory is correct, that should be full of liquid nitrogen, yes. And now, we can actually make superconducting cable and fill it with that and use it. We have achieved... Oh wait, hold on. The DC electric engine and the lever are still required because we still need to power the uh, filling station. And now, just do this. Here. Does it work here? It does not. Let's put a block down. Throw this down there. Now, I don't know if that's where the power goes in. It is not. So we'll throw it there. And I believe that's it. Yeah, it's just straight up minimum power. So now, using that, we can actually make superconducting wire using silver, centered tungsten, and gold with blast glass. How much blast glass do we have? We have a solid amount. Gold, we also have a solid amount. Silver, a solid amount. And then stack of redstone. And then we also need centered tungsten. And as previously, uh, we don't have a full time setup for the centered tungsten ingots yet. So we'll grab our regular furnace and replace the uh, last furnace for now, since we only use these intermittently and not usually simultaneously. And as it gets above the temperature, it'll start going. 1350 is the target for that one. So now we come back over here our thing I kind of wish that I could uncombine those tungsten carbide because I used way too much yeah unfortunately I can't but it is what it is So we have these. I'm gonna grab the 16 of those as well. All the ores are not available. All the flakes are gone. The only thing I can do is keep an eye out for like iron ingots and wait for the number to go up. And every time that number goes up, we have a chance at getting more uh, tungsten flakes. won't be enough for exactly what I wanted to do, but we'll be pretty good shape. But we'll do that. And then we just need to cover them with wool of any kind. We have plenty of wool. So first we'll come over here and we will fill in this recipe. That, the gold, the redstone, the ingots, what am I missing? Steel. A few stacks of that. We just toss these in here and we should be able to get superconducting wires out of them. These are extremely important and we're going to need a ton of them, so let's go.
that's all the centered tungsten that we have available. We can make more of both that and the blast glass later. Let's throw these things back where they came from. And then let's grab some wool. And throw these things in like so. And then more wool. Or actually out of wool. Okay, in that case, we'll split some of these and make as much as we can. Which is that much. The uninsulated stuff works too, but uninsulated cabling with massive amounts of power going through it does probably exactly what you would expect it to do. And that is uh, make you very sad if you get close to it. Now we have these. We'll throw the rest of the superconducting wire in there until we get more of the uh, other stuff. But then we can throw that in there. And it will make the actual cabling. Which, in theory... If I had an open side to this, which I could get just by moving this autocrafter over, I could hook this up to a uh, autocrafting thing that's filled with coolant. We'll just fill all of these with coolant. only uses 25 per wire too. Actually pretty cheap. And there we go. So now here's my big question. With these batteries, take power in any of their sides and all and we'll put power out the top with this wiring does it go into the RF batteries as such it will not connect to the RF batteries it appears is unfortunate but acceptable in that case let's see we use electrograft Those turbines are producing uh, how much power in total? Also, I guess I could check and see how the uh, So, 8.590 gigawatts times 3, which is, uh, you know, times billion. So then, we're currently producing 25.77 
gigawatts of power. Our next available option for a battery is the Aurora battery, which can only put out 268 megawatts of power at a time. So if we divide that by 268 million, that means we will need... Wait. So redo that. Times, or divided by 268 million. And we get 96 batteries in order to j maintain a just barely positive ratio. <laughs> it's a lot of batteries. So what happens if I go from RF back into... The regular power. Well, that's a shame. Because I don't... Well, I could do this. And that magnetostatic engine, which requires coolant, being uh, liquid nitrogen, probably, doesn't appear to have limitations. So it does not. So I could convert it to RF and then just use it as RF. But I kind of really want to use Electrocraft. And so I think what I'll do is use the Auroral batteries or maybe graf graphene batteries. Hundred and sixty eight megawatts versus sixteen cheats. If only there was a better battery. Though though to be fair, as with real life nuclear physics and nuclear uh power. Storing said power is not an easy thing to do. And it's almost impossible to store all of the power. There is always a waste because of the way current world infrastructure is set up. And so these things will work. The only problem is that if I convert to RF from this, basically, let's see, other interaction, the RF storage battery things electrical storage and transport resistor values are determined by three bands on the resistor each color corresponds to a value from zero to nine the first two bands are the tens and the one places respectively relays 
flying electric power connects it and allows it to the flow, shutting it off. So that's basically a switch. Wires are wires. Resistors and precision resistors. So it limits current, not voltage. Okay. And then the transformer... The ratio of coils on the input side to the output side determines the change in voltage current. Ratios less than 1, such as 1 to 8, favor an increased current, while ratios larger than 1 uh, favor increased voltage. Efficiency drops and the wasted... As the ratio gets farther from 1, efficiency drops and wasted energy is dissipated as heat. Excessive temperature larger than 1000 degrees Celsius or excessive currents will cause the transformer to violently fail. Can be cooled with thins or liquid nitrogen. Okay. Do I have the pink supercharged? Because I do need a surplus of nether stars now. I do not. So, how much liquid chromium do you have now, actually? Over a thousand buckets of liquid chroma. Excellent. Um, am I exporting that liquid chroma anywhere? I should be exporting it into this. Do I have an extra line on that one? Because we need butt tons of liquid chroma. We're not running it off that, so... We could use the pink line, or we could use an extra line from this. Might make more sense to do that. A smart cable fluix. It's a generic smart cable. I'm gonna replace those with colored cab smart cables. Red, that one, and pink for that one. And then... I'm gonna use, like... Do I have lime? I do not have lime. Normal green. I do have normal green. So we're gonna do that then. And... We're gonna have the red cable. I think instead of smart cable, I'm just going to do normal red covered cable. Right. I don't have a lot of the wool at the moment. Oh, that's it. That's fine. So, throw that on the ground because I can, and then we're going to have to replace most of this, actually all of it, with red cable. At least up to that point. Then over here, we're going to want the green cable to come... I think I can just put it in the top for reservoirs. I don't remember. We're going to try it on the top, and if I can't do the top, then I'll do otherwise. 
we bring that up here and into this, we are still have plenty of channels. So let's do this. Up and up. Up. I may have trapped myself. I have not. No, I have. Never mind. I'm good. Okay. So now let's do a fluid import. And then grab a bucket of liquid chroma. Now let's see if that works. It appears not, so it will have to go on the side, and that's fine. It's going up, but I think it's going up because... Because of the furnaces? No, it's not going up. Okay, so we'll rip this off. Grab the green cable because I wasn't supposed to put that away. Oh, it's an import bus, derp. It's supposed to be export. Okay, we'll try this again, just to see if I can save on it a little bit. Looks like the answer to that... may still be no. So, down here? I know it definitely works there. And there it goes. Excellent, excellent. Fixed up that. Now... Go ahead and make a quick run over here and grab some acceleration cards because I'm going to want them. I don't need all of them, I need only like four. So that this fills up as fast as possible. Bill, become full of my liquid chroma thing. This will be pretty good. This is really going to uh, sort of show liquid chroma and make everything that we're doing when we're interacting with liquid chroma so much easier. But let's see now. Okay, with that, all done. We can throw this stuff back away now. And now what I need to do is I need to make a bunch of the uh, iridescent crystals, which is just off of normal crystal shards. And purification powder. How many rock crystals do I have, actually? 
one raw crystal. Can these raw crystals be made? No, they can't. Okay. So, shard. Have a lot of those now. And we'll toss... Yeah. We'll toss uh, the tech stuff away for the moment while I prepare to get the things that I need for multiply or producing nether stars. Go, go, go! Where's my wand? There it is. I really want to figure out how to use the casting delegate too. And hook it up to the ME system so I don't have to do all this manually because it's really, really uncomfortable doing this all by hand. And the last four. Oh wait, how did I do that? Okay, there we go. And now I do need to fix that. Bucket of liquid chroma. That corner spot. There we go. Now that's fixed, and we can move on to... Making a bunch of these iridescent crystal shards. Out of raw crystals. Actually... Time Accelerator. Ambient. Contributor. Oh, my particles. Is that what it looks like all the time? Does the decreased particles turn it down? Oh, there's something funny going on with that. Oh, it's because it's it's being time accelerated too. Time accelerator doesn't appear to be affecting this though. It's unfortunate. It takes a little bit of time. I would have hoped that I could do that. There's nothing wrong with that, though.
I guess more of the focus crystals would make this go faster too. How high on the focus crystals can I actually go? I can do exquisites out of crystal lenses. This thing. That's super cheap, actually. Pretty colors. I really need to figure out how to use this item inserter. Because it's the, uh. It would be the way I, that I could, like, pseudo automate this. I just don't know what the interface means at all. It's got a lot of XP, actually. Um... How does this work? Right, I have to use the linker. So it doesn't actually have to go there. So, is the linker in here? I do have it in here. And then what I can do, I guess, is throw that there and then... Valid tile. See the gray arrows turn red. Open the inserter GUI and put the ingredients for the alloys in the left slots. You'll see the gray arrows turn red. Okay, and then... Click the yellow arrow on the right hand side until it f turns purple for entity mode. Oh. 
Finally, just click the red arrows. They'll turn green and the ingredients will get dropped wherever I found it. So just click the red arrows. Something feels off. Something feels really off about this. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> Damn it. Okay, so... What if I... So this is like the speed that it's supposed to use it, I guess. Okay. So I guess I could use a vacuum chest and hook it up to this. What happens? What happens if I use If it turns them into the uh iridescent crystals? What happens if I throw it into there when that happens? Will it just keep trying to do it? I'm curious. Okay. So when that's like that, what happens if I do this? It doesn't fix it. Okay, so... What happens if I set it to right-click instead, then? That's way better. Pops them out and then waits. In that case, I can pull the one extra raw one that I have out. Throw it in here. And then it'll wait until that's done. Iridescent crystals will come out. And then they pop out over there. Yes! Automated... I don't have to do that anymore. That's great. And then... Okay, so, now that we have that, is it only accept full stacks? Oh no, there was more iridescent crystal shards, that's fine. So there we go, we have a bunch of stacks of them. I don't know exactly how many we have how many we need but we have uh we have that semi-automated now so what if i make a hopper real quick so 
at a chest. And then I make some more raw crystals just for the sake of it. Um, we'll do it out of Nyla since I have a lot of it. I'm almost out of purification powder though, so that's going to require white and black, right? There's something not animating about it, but I'm pretty sure it's white and black. Yeah, even amounts. So we'll grab the boosted crystals. Oh, I don't have a lot of boosted Tahar either. Um, that's fine. I'll just break some Tahar leaves. Oh, my. That's an emote I wasn't expecting to see at all. Now we should be good. We have plenty of Tahara boosted crystals now. now. Let's make more purification powder real quick. This thing is super dangerous, so... Like... Dar. Go, go, go! Ow. Okay. Purification powder goes in. We'll throw the iridescence in as well. That way we have a little bit more space to work with. Put another one in there and just took a stack at it. Guess it doesn't like it when you chuck stacks at it. Ow! Go. It's trying to murder me. If I didn't have this level of health boost, this would this transmutation flame would likely be killing me. It doesn't like being overpowered. And actually, I can make this a little bit easier on myself and just chuck the purification powder down there. Because that vacuum chest actually just pulls in everything that it gets and sticks it in the ME system, so that's useful.
Ow, ow. And then the last set. Oh my gosh. There we go. Many, 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 many more purification powders. And so now we grab four stacks of it. And it's still going up by a lot. It's lovely. I wonder if that's enough time or not. Excellent. That just works. All right. And it leaves one item remaining every time. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Okay, so now... We need to make... Iridescent crystal chunks. So how about transmissive dust? How are we doing on that? We have plenty. Okay, good. So. Okay. Got on pretty much all of that. So we need 48. Per thing, and I want to try to charge two pylons. That, so we'll need 48 of each of those and everything. And then we'll also need the resonant, which we actually may not have enough of. That's easy to get, isn't it? Not necessarily. But it is also black and white, so. 
I'll just grab another stack of those shards and then make more with the transmutation flame. And now we'll just dump these all to the vacuum. Set it back to running that. And we just come over here, throw the rest in can. Ow. And that's all of it. And so now for each of these, I need two stacks of 48. So a stack and a half of that. I can throw that in there. And then I also need 48 focal powder. Did them? and transmissive dust. And that's all that's necessary to make them outside of binding crystals, which we will also need And so now we have everything we need. Let me just throw as many of these on as we can. And we have enough of it now, so... I'm just going to put it in the places where it works. And where... Only one stack of it, we'll just so like this. Plus the four those. Oops. Resonant dusts in the top two. Local powder in the left one. Transmissive dust in the right one. And now we do the same here again. Let's throw the binding crystals in the middle. And then we do the same configuration. It's like that. And then you. 
So we now have the iridescent crystal chunks, which now we can turn into the power crystals. Power crystals, we will need 16 of each of those in every slot. So let's separate this into 16s real quick so we can get that done right out of the way. And then I need diamonds and obsidian. Obsidian I need actually a lot of. I need 60 times 5. And then also... I need... 32 glowstone. Go glowstone, go! Alright, and this will be enough to... make... 16 power crystals and supercharge... two more of the pylons. Which is different than turbocharging. Turbo is the next step up. Go, Crystal Energy, go! Now, that's going to take a decent amount of time while we wait, so I need to make sure which ones we are supercharging. We're trying to replicate the nether star, so... The game will crash. Man. Right when the song ended, too. That's kind of funny. Did I ever change the lurk thing back so that it do does it randomly instead of always picks the one? Not sure I did. Nope, oh, I didn't change it. There we go. That'll be fixed the next time I restart it. Game take a second to load. Right now, got that back up again. Hopefully, that stays the way it's going to be. Okay, so now, what's next on the agenda is that once we get that done, uh, we were looking at the nether star thing. So the only new one that we need is pink energy, and that one is over there by about 400 meters, and then we're also going to supercharge the white because I need that for the lumen tree because we're using a ton of the shards, and so... 
it's having a hard time maintaining that, basically. It's just constantly draining it dry over there. You can sort of see it. Maybe. There we go. Like, it's basically emptying the thing and then going like, ha, huh, you're out of energy. But we're going to uh, do exactly what we did with the red one right there, which is just sit there and supercharge it. Uh, as soon as those uh, crystals are done crafting down there. I'm going to fill up on our red too, because all of our abilities use red. Which is actually kind of hard to see because it's not animating. Um... see animations it's not animated textures it's one of those three things it's probably terrain isn't it Yeah, it is. Oh well. But yeah, as you can see on the right side, the abilities that we're currently using use the every single one of them except for the uh, health boost uses red, but health boost only uses their that stuff when you use it immediately. And so all of the rest of that stuff actually... Um, well... All of it uses red, and that's what we need. So that's why we supercharge that one. But just like how we charged that one, we're going to be doing that to the white one because we need it to keep making leaves, and it's doing it really slowly. We're going to finish uh, charging all the rest of them soon, TM. But for now, uh, that's what we're going to get. We just need this to finish over here. And we're most of the way done on that craft. It's also... Find focus crystals. For a second I thought I was going to crash, crash again. We uh, need these exquisite focus crystals. Which use... More of the refined ones, plus all the other stuff. So it's not that expensive. We just need to make another set of eight of these and then convert them into the new ones. So. So, eight, 16, and then 16 times eight. Sixteen times two is thirty-two. Times two is sixty-four. Alright, so we need thirty-two of them. Because it'll divide it in half and then divide it in half again, and then we'll have the sixteen of the refined ones. So thirty-two of these it is. Let's grab those things real quick, because I would like to make those. So, we need 32 of these. 32, 16, 8. Yep. So, stone. We need 32 of. And then... We need 32 slabs. And we also need 32 emeralds. Come over here. Our power crystals are done being cooked. And then we make these into flawed crystals. So 
So now we take these 32 flawed crystals. And we need to turn them into focus crystals. Which require 16 binding crystals, 32 focal powder, and 32 stone slabs. So then we bring these in here, we do this part. As such. And then we get the normal focus crystals, then we will turn these into eight refined focus crystals. Through binding crystals and then Purification powder, aviolite, chiseled quartz blocks, and crystalline stone. For that, we'll need six, eight of these. Sixteen chiseled quartz blocks. Which is made out of quartz slabs, made out of blocks of quartz. And so we need to make like a thousand more of those. So we'll get crafting on those. But for the quartz stuff. And we need uh, 16 of these. Then we also need 32 Avalite and a stack plus 16 of purification powder. Also eight binding crystals. That. Yeah. And then lastly, what was it? So five. Five times eight is forty. So we'll bring these back over here. Throw the binding crystals in the middle. And then Let's go here. Purification go powder goes in the middle, I believe. Yep. Just like that. And then we need the four avio lights around the corners here. And these go down here like this. Then we have eight crafts of the exquisite focus crystals to make. So we need crystal lenses, eight of them.
So that's a stack of 32 focal powder, 16 of Nyla and Tara, and some glass. of Nyla and Tahara. Eight glass. And that's it. And Tara and the glass. And then the exquisite focus crystals. The only thing I have to craft is eight aura conducting ingots. So, aura conducting ingots. So two stacks of redstone, eight iron ingots. And then 32 nether quartz, 64 glowstone, and 64 aura dust. Something funny happened. Oh my god, I got stuck. Okay. Now, hopefully the liquid spiller will actually detect that one. I know it detects the one directly under it, but hopefully the adjacent one works too. We'll see. I may just have to replace one of the like that with a reservoir and use it for making ingots out of. And it looks like that's what I'm going to have to do. And then let's also grab a bucket. For a bucket of liquid chromo to fix that. Actually, that works just fine. Just like that. And then in here is where we'll craft our ingots. Go, go, go. Become aura conducting ingots for me, my friends. We shall. The thing. Uh, focus. And I need 32 luminite and 16 engraved crystalline stone. Yeah. 
Engraved, I believe, is this. Oh, that's embossed. Engraved is the one with the missing in the middle. So is it 8 or 16? Sixteen. Okay. Okay. Now, we have the eight of those. We have the sixteen of those. have the 32 of these and then the last thing was the resonating or luma dust and I need 40 of that excellent do this are conducting it on the bottom. Let's take a look. Yeah. That goes there along with these. Then... These I actually need to take back now. Split in half. Place them. The luminite, I believe, goes in the cardinals. Or the corners, sorry. And then the five of these. Like so. And there we go. We are missing a certain color. It's Tahara. It's probably out of energy from the tree, so let's uh, go hit it with some power crystals real quick. Yeah, it's totally toast. So let's fix that. And now it is sufficiently supercharged, not turbocharged, which will be a thing we encounter soon, TM. But, uh, sur uh, supercharged. So now our craft should be doing, if not done. It is taking its time, but it is doing. That has way more XP. I wonder what happens when that gets completely full. That'd be interesting to find out. Looks like this got reset though on its experience bar because I broke the focus crystals. That's disappointing. Disappointment! Well, while that's doing that, let's go and supercharge the pink pylon which is just this way and that'll stay chunk loaded because of what we had set up before and that is fine but uh we are coming up on the end of the stream here rather we're we're past the end of the stream so once i'm done with this we will move on but for now um this is what we're working on 
Yeah, the pink one's struggling too. It's still gonna struggle probably after I get this sorted. But at least it'll be better than without it. There we go. And now the pink is sufficiently charged to do pink things. Let's go. Right, and I believe our focus crystals are done. So let's grab them. Fat focus crystals. There we go. You see. Excellent. All right, so we didn't get around to everything. We did some extracurricular stuff, so that was uh, that was a little bit fun. Um, but it is time for me to jump out. It's food time and all sorts of other stuff time. It, I can only spend so much time playing Minecraft because I need to do other things during the day slash night. But I will be back tomorrow. Today is Saturday, tomorrow is Sunday at 5 p.m. Pacific, and we will be doing another four to five hour stream unless something extraordinary happens. And uh, that'll be all for that. So uh, I hope everyone had a great time watching, and otherwise, uh, thank you for watching. I will see you all tomorrow, hopefully, at 5 p.m. PST, and I'll see you next time. It's all about humanity.